Kara Swiger, where we explore the intersection of making art and making money. This week in the Biz Confidence Challenge, I ask you to list three things that you're proud of, and not just list them for yourself at home, but to share them on Instagram with the hashtag BizConfidenceChallenge. And I want to acknowledge that this is really, really hard. So today we're going to talk about why it's so hard to talk about what we're proud of and why you still need to do it for your business. We're also gonna talk about what confidence is and is not and why it matters. So welcome to episode 126 of Explore Your Enthusiasm with me, Tara Swiger. A new round of the Biz Confidence Challenge is live right now as you listen to this. If you're listening to this right after I posted it, it actually started this week. But if you haven't joined us yet, it's not too late. You can sign up at taraswiger.com slash bizconfidence. And the challenge is a six-week totally free course in, it's a practice really in building confidence in both yourself and your business so that you can move forward and do the things your business needs you to do. So each week I send one uh, challenge via email and I post it on Instagram. You then reply on Instagram by using the hashtag bizconfidencechallenge. There is a lovely supportive community around it. And then each week in the Wednesday podcast episode, like this one, I explain how that challenge actually works to build your confidence. And then the following Thursday, I will hold a live webinar workshop where we will talk about it uh, even deeper. I will answer the questions that have come up on Instagram and in my emails. And I'm also gonna share my own answer to the challenge each week in the webinar. So if you have already signed up for Biz Confidence, you're gonna get the reminder of the webinar, you're gonna get entry into it. If you haven't yet, you need to sign up at tarsweiger.com slash bizconfidence, and that will give you entry and details about every webinar. So you're gonna get an email with Monday on the challenge, you'll get an email on Wednesday to point you to the podcast episode, and then a reminder five minutes before the webinar starts. But you can go on and put those webinars in your calendar. All those details will be there when you sign up, with the page to go, the time of it, everything. And if you can't attend live, there are um, the recordings will live right there on that page. So if uh, that's what we're going to talk about today is why this even matters, why we're even doing this. So I do want to say, if you're listening to this after November of 2016, the Biz Confidence Challenge might not be live, but you can still go to that same page, sign up, and you'll be notified when it goes live again. But first... When, before we get deeper into confidence, I want to be clear about why we're talking about it. And I actually answered this question for someone in person when she said, uh, it was like a peer, another teacher, and she said, oh, I saw your, I saw your business confidence thing, and I wondered how that, what that has to do with the people that you help in their business. Because most of my classes, the classes that I sell, are extremely practical and pragmatic. So Pay Yourself walks you through the process of figuring out your profitability and your prices. Uh, Craft, your, Craft Your Marketing walks you through building a marketing plan. They're all like very hands-on tools strategy oriented and confidence is like kind of soft and gooey. So she's like, why are you doing this? And this is what I told her and this is why we're doing it. It's a not so that you feel good about yourself. That's a great side benefit, but that's not what I care about. I care about helping you build your business. And what I found is that people know what to do, but they don't do it. So when I ask people, they say, I, I know I should do this. I should do this, but I'm not doing it. I say, why? So one of the things that comes up is I'm not having enough time, which is why I have the class uh, get more done. But another thing that comes up is people just thinking, well, I don't like know. Am I good enough to do it? Should I do it? Uh, I don't know. Or I feel nervous. That is lack of confidence. So by building your confidence, you're going to take the action you need to take because lack of confidence is what's holding you back from action. But confidence alone won't build an awesome business. People have confidence in all kinds of things, and it doesn't mean that they're actually good at it. What will build an awesome business is taking action. So we're going to build the confidence and then change it into action. And actually, the, uh, the challenge, the Biz Confidence Challenge, makes you do that at the end. So it results in some forward movement in your business. We're not just going to leave it at feeling good and feeling confident. We are going to... Um, help you build your confidence and then help you take the action that your lack of confidence has been holding you back from. So 
let's address all of this. Now this first week's challenge was to list three things you're proud of. What I find interesting is that when I pulled this in the past, almost everybody, when they post the list of three things they're proud of, they apologize. They apologize to their followers for sharing the things they're proud of. And I totally get it. And it's funny because it's my inclination too. But when I'm reading a bunch of responses, it becomes very obvious to me that we're all doing this apologizing thing. And I get it because I struggle to say, I am so proud of this. It just feels weird. And here's a couple reasons why I think it feels weird. So in the first round, a couple people said that it felt arrogant or cocky. Like they just felt like they were being arrogant if they just put out there, I'm proud of this. Here are the three things. So I actually recorded an episode back in the spring about the difference between arrogance and confidence. It's a big difference. So if you're feeling worried that building your confidence is going to make you an arrogant person, go listen to that episode. It's episode 93. You can find it on my website or however you're listening to this. If you're listening to this on your device, um, you can go back and listen to episode 93. It's called The Difference Between Arrogance and Confidence. Now, a few other people mentioned pride. They said, I don't want to say the phrase, I'm proud, because pride is a bad thing. And we just shouldn't be too prideful. And that is like distilled down into the Bible verse, Proverbs 16, 18, that so many of us have heard, even if you didn't you know nothing about the Bible, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, pride goes before the fall. And the verse is actually pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit goes before the fall. We can tense it right down to pride and fall because pride, destruction, oh no. So I wanted to dig into this a little more because I have heard that so much in my own life and so many of you that took biz confidence the first time said, I just am not comfortable being proud. So Here's the thing to keep in mind. In the English language, we have two different definitions for the word pride. The number one, and this is quoted from um, a dictionary I found online, uh, Webster's, I think. Uh, I'll have the links to everything in the show notes. <laughs> but the first definition is feeling a deep pleasure or satisfaction as a result of one's own achievements, qualities, or possessions, or those of someone whom one is closely associated, right? A feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction. That's awesome. And it might be you or it might be someone you're associated with. Like you might be a proud grandma or a proud mom or I'm a proud wife or proud daughter, right? That's because you're feeling pleased and satisfied with something either in your life or someone you're close to. The second definition is having or showing a high or excessively high opinion of oneself or one's importance. This is tied into narcissism, where you believe you're wonderful in the center of everything and the best. Now, Here's what I thought was really interesting. The antonym, or the word that means the opposite, the antonym for the first definition, the feeling of deep pleasure, the antonym for that is shame. Now the antonym for the second definition, the one where you have an excessively high opinion of yourself, is humbled. And when we put it like that, you can see the difference, right? So if you are choosing in between shame or humbled, yeah, being humble is a good thing. Shame, not so much. So let's go the opposite of that. The opposite of that, pride. It's just a different definition of pride. So in identifying the result of one's own achievement, which is what I asked you to do when I ask you to list three things that are the result of one's own achievement, you are not automatically taking an excessively high opinion of yourself. Those are two totally different definitions. And this is a really important thing. Deciding not to be proud of your own accomplishments, it's not being humble. What it is, is being ashamed. And you can't move forward if you're stuck in shame and self-doubt. And so saying, I'm not comfortable talking, like even acknowledging my accomplishments to myself. It is not that you're a great, humble person. It is that you feel shame around what you've done, your accomplishments, or that you haven't done enough, or just in um, feeling good about yourself. So. Speaking of feeling good about yourself, a couple of people mentioned self-esteem, high and low self-esteem. And this is something that in the literature on confidence is usually separated out. Self-esteem is not the same as confidence. When they do research and studies about what they mean, they mean two different things. So let's talk about what self-esteem is. Self-esteem is an evaluation of our own worthiness or the belief that we are good. 
So a sociologist back in the early 1900s, Charles Horton Cooley, identified a source of self-esteem to be based on our perception of how we appear to others. And he called this the looking glass self. So often self-esteem is not based on who you truly are. It's how you think other people are perceiving and judging you. That's pretty complex and that's pretty troubling because we have no idea what other people think and even if we did know what they think, we can do nothing in our own selves to change what they think, right? It's their stuff, it's not our stuff. And what's even worse is that research shows that self-esteem is more strongly influenced by strangers than close friends and family. So your self-esteem is likely to go up or down based on the judgment of total strangers. So even if your parents or your loved ones are proud of you, you pay more attention to what uh, how other people are perceiving you, people you don't even know, right? That's weird. <laughs> That's not helpful to you needing to take action to move forward in your business. And someone on Periscope said, this is heavy stuff. This is heavy stuff, but this is what keeps us from going forward in the thing we want to be doing. And working on your business is actually heavy emotional stuff for everybody I've ever met. <laughs> one of my customers, so or one of my uh, students I was working with, she said that um, business was her was exactly like therapy. The stuff that came up for her in therapy came up for her in her business because you have to have confidence to move forward in your business. So, um, the the other troubling thing about self esteem and the reason why we're not we're not trying to build your self esteem in this in this challenge is that many of us have a sense of what researchers call a contingent self worth. So contingent self-worth means that your self-worth depends on your failure or success, people's approval or disapproval. We believe that our worth comes from how successful we are in certain areas. So our self-worth is contingent on if we're good in certain areas. Now those areas differ for everybody and they're usually the ones that we value or that we think are in-group values. So some of the things that researchers have identified is uh, what you look like, how, how much money you make, what kind of house you live in, what kind of career you choose to go into. Different people are going to have different uh, measurements of if you are worthy of your self-worth or not. So even that alone shows you how um, fragile this all is and how it's not uh, like true. Your perception of your self-worth, because it might be based on other people, it might be based on um, contingent to these very certain areas, it's, it's changeable and it's fragile and you aren't in as much control of it as we would like you to be. <laughs> so in many ways, our self-esteem and our belief in our own worth does get in the way of taking action in your business. It does impact what you do in your business or not. Because if you have low self-esteem, you're unlikely to believe you deserve a business, and so you're unlikely to even try to make it happen. And I've met people like this. They are just like, I'm not good enough. I could never do that. Well, then I can't help you. <laughs> if you believe you really can't ever do it, then you first need to work on that in order to actually start to see the possibility of the things you could do. And here's the thing. We as humans have some pretty ineffective ways of building self-esteem. Uh, one of the ways is we put down other people so that we feel superior and more special. You might do that out loud, in which case you're a bully, or you might do it in your own head. We also avoid doing things we're bad at so we don't feel like a failure. We talked about this more in my episode on mindset, and there's a lot of research around mindset that if you believe who you are is fixed and doesn't change, then you are less likely to do scary things because you, you are afraid of having that um, self-perception destroyed by failing at the scary thing. And we try to pretend that, that we're the whatever we think other people want us to be. So those are three ways that we build our self-esteem that are not um, healthy or effective at moving forward and actually creating the kind of life we wanna create. And also, self-esteem is not, high self-esteem on its own isn't necessarily a good thing. So studies show that people with high self-esteem actually have a harder time hearing neutral or negative feedback, and they avoid things that are gonna make them feel like a failure. And that's if that high self-esteem is built on the belief that you have to be special to be good. And so they wanna keep themselves feeling special, so any neutral or negative feedback destroys that so and they avoid things that make them feel like a failure if you're going to avoid things that make you feel like a failure then you're going to avoid 
most of the things it takes to build a business because most of the things you'll have to do, you will not get right the first time. And this figuring out what actually works in your business requires a lot of trying and failing, trying and succeeding a little bit, doing more of what works and doing less of what doesn't. So if your high self-esteem is built on you not ever failing, then it's going to be too fragile to go through the rigors of building a business. But if your self-esteem is built on the universal truth that we are all good enough, that we are all trying our hardest and doing our best, then you're going to be resilient enough to deal with what comes in your business. Now, confidence is not about our self-worth. Confidence is about the situation in front of you. So confidence is a belief that you can do the thing that is next in front of you. And this belief that this belief has to exist before you'll actually act, and it's what drives action. So I want to talk about the thing that that voice inside of you that says you're going to have more confidence one day, because this is what I heard when I first started talking about confidence last year, that one day I'll have confidence when I really deserve it. And you are halfway right, because confidence, which you're going to hear me say a lot, true confidence that's not built on arrogance is built on competence. Your ability to be good at something. It's not just built on believing in yourself. True confidence, the belief that you can do the next thing, is built on the fact that you've done the things in the past. So you can't just convince yourself to feel good about your work or your business. You have to eventually be good at it. Now, there are two ways to get confidence before you feel it, and we're going to talk about both. The first one is to transfer it from another area, and the second is to recognize where you are already good. You might not be feeling it even though you have the competence that should build your confidence. So competence, the belief that you, like, not the belief, uh, competence is actually the ability to do something it leads to the belief that you can do the next thing. It leads to, leads to confidence. And confidence leads you to doing the things that build more competence. So you've got to kick off this virtuous cycle by looking at what you know you can do, your area of competence, and doing more of it and transferring it to an area where you maybe don't have competence yet and you don't have much confidence. Okay? So I'm going to say that again. Competence gives you the confidence to do things that then build competence. This is known as a competence confidence loop, and it is a lovely virtuous cycle that the more I do in business, the more risks I take, the more things I try, the more everything, the more I have built an actual ability and skill to do that thing in my business. So the more often I run my numbers and look at Google Analytics or uh, look at my tax information, the more skilled I get at being able to read Google Analytics or my numbers or my tax information. The more I podcast, the more skilled I get at being able to do all of the podcasting steps. Right? But you first have to have the confidence to get started. So you can transfer your confidence. So here's the thing. You may feel, everybody, most of us, feels really confident in one area, but might have no confidence in another area. So this is perfectly normal, and it's, like, smart, right? You're not good at everything, and that is totally okay. Now, you can see here, this is an aside, that you're needing to keep your fragile sense of high self-esteem would be troubled at this idea that you're not going to be good at everything. So, it's fine. You can still have confidence in your business, even if you're not good at everything. Because confidence is not something you're going to get once and then have for every situation. Right? You're not going to go through biz confidence, have new confidence to do the next thing in your business, and then the next challenge in six months or a year be like, Psh, I got this, no problem. Most of us keep going through cycles of this. This is actually why I've held it a couple times. Many of my students have gone through it every time with me, and I go through it every time, and I always discover something I'm avoiding because I don't have enough confidence in that area. So it's not something you're going to get once and for all and have it for every situation, but it's transferable from one area to another area by recognizing your competence, where you're good in another area, and where you have been successful, you can transfer that into another area. Let me give you an example because this may seem kind of weird. For example, I am an excellent listener, 
and a pretty good friend. I'm also an excellent reader and autodidact. I can teach myself anything I set my mind to teach myself. I have I have confidence in that area because I've learned it over time since, you know, I first started to read when I was six. And I was a great student. I kept my GPA high enough to keep my scholarship while working 30 to 40 hours a week at anywhere from two to four jobs at any one time all through college. So when I started my business, which is a couple years after I got out of college in 2006, that, those facts I just stated for you, that is where I got my confidence to be able to do the crazy thing of taking pictures of my urn and putting it online for people to buy. And actually taking my urn into the local art gallery and having them sell it there. Um, of going into a urn shop and when she said, could you dye that for me? I said, sure, even though I hadn't dyed anything professionally ever. I got the confidence in knowing I can teach myself stuff and I juggled a million things while learning new things. I can juggle multiple jobs and projects and I've been tenacious. I took all of those facts and I decided this new project of a business or dyeing this yarn for the per first person who asked for it, this project takes the same skills and I already have those skills. But that was a belief and that was a decision. Nobody told me that. Nobody gave me permission. Nobody came along and said, you know what? You are good in X, Y, and Z. Apply that to this situation and you'll have it figured out. So you can do the same thing. Now I want to like stress, I had no right having confidence in my business skills because I hadn't done anything in a business. I had no business skills. But I borrowed that confidence from an area that I decided applied to the new area. So you can do that too. This is exactly why I ask you to list three things you're proud of because I want you to recognize where you already have confidence. Um, many people who do this will be at the very beginning of their business journey. They'll have just started selling the thing that they make or their artwork. So they, they don't have any skills in a business yet, but they can see the things that they're proud of that they've succeeded at, take that confidence and apply it to their business. And then they'll start doing things in their business with that little bit of confidence and they'll build competence, which then will build the confidence to move forward. Now there's no getting past this. Your confidence is gonna grow as you work hard at improving your skill and experience and competence. You cannot simply convince yourself you're good enough <laughs> and keep going and hope the confidence shows up. You need to locate it somewhere transfer it to this situation and then start working, right? Your business isn't gonna grow if you don't take that action. Now, that said, so many of my readers and listeners and watchers are amazing at what they do. They have the skills. They are, their work is lovely, their craftsmanship is expert, and yet they don't feel great at it. They hesitate to apply to a show or they're too embarrassed to tell anyone about their shop online, and they tell themselves that they have to get it all together before they can do the thing they wanna do. And we all encounter this all throughout the life of our business. But so if this is you, and I'm betting for a good percentage of you, this is you, you have great work, it's not that you just need to work harder, it's that you need to acknowledge what you've already done. It's that you need to take confidence in the competence you've already built and move forward with it. So that's why this first week's challenge is to acknowledge what you've already done. If you already have a business, I want to list I want you to list three things you're proud of in that business. If you haven't yet started selling your thing, you can list three things you're proud of in any other area of your life that would apply to your business. So list three things that prove you deserve to feel great about your work. And the three things that prove you deserve a sustainable, thriving business. The work you've already done, the things you've already accomplished. And remember, this isn't pride like an excessively high sense of yourself. This is pride as in the, the pleasure and satisfaction of good work you've already done. Now, I wanna say that we are starting with a positive for a few reasons. We are going to get into the failures. That is something that's part of building confidence too. But we're starting with a positive for a couple reasons. Because confidence built on competence, so you gotta start acknowledging your competence. The second reason is it's really easy to focus on the negative. In fact, we our brains are hardwired for this. We have a negativity bias, and that means we look for the things that are failures and could kill us before we 
um, and we weight them bigger, then we weight the good stuff that's just moving along easily, right? So it's, uh, I'm betting that you all have a list in your head of the hundreds of things you have messed up and failed at, or even that you failed to do and you haven't moved forward on it. You do not need my help focusing on all of the many things you've gotten wrong. Instead, you need a prompt to look at the other side of it, to look at all the things you've gotten right, all the things you have done. And the third reason is by focusing on the stuff you have done, you are going to get better at seeing the stuff you have done, and that builds confidence long term. In other words, what I'm hoping to build in you in the next six weeks is what all of these um, practices and exercises are going to help you build is the um, confidence building muscle. So whenever you come across a new challenge, you can build the confidence you need to move forward. So you get better and better at seeing the things that should inspire your own confidence. So if you haven't completed this week's challenge yet, either because you didn't want to feel prideful or you thought it was about self-esteem or you just have a hard time seeing the things you've succeeded at, here is another reminder and another chance to do it. I want you to make a list of three things you're proud of. Then I want you to share a picture on Instagram of at least one of those things, write your three things underneath it, and put the tag Biz Confidence Challenge so we can all find it. Make sure you're spelling confidence right. It's a tricky word. Hashtag Biz Confidence Challenge on Instagram. We will all see and celebrate with you. And you will see all the other people listing their three things. So even if we all are um, have a haughty spirit, as the Bible verse says, <laughs> we will have it together and you will see you're not alone in recognizing and acknowledging the things that you are great at. In closing, I want to tell you, I am so, so proud of you and everything you've done. You deserve to have the confidence to take the next step, whatever the next step is for you. Wherever you are, whatever you failed to do in the past, whatever you have uh, done or not done, you can take the next step. I hope that the Biz Confidence Challenge helps you do that. Again, if you haven't signed up and you have no idea what I'm talking about, go to tarsweiger.com slash bizconfidence. You will get uh, the challenges in order. So even though we all started on Monday, you will start after you join and you will get access to all the webinars. So I am going to share, I'm going to feel awkward, but in tomorrow's webinar, I am going to share the uh, things that I've done that I'm proud of and how I've transferred areas and I'm going to answer all your questions that come up this week on Instagram so whatever question you have post on Instagram or hit reply to my emails and ask me we'll talk about it in the webinar there'll also be a live chat room so you can ask your questions it's super fun I've had a great time on these webinars so join us by signing up tarasweiger.com slash bizconfidence if you've already signed up there you'll get a reminder of the webinar and you've got access to the page already. Thank you so much. I am so proud of you. I wish you a very enthusiastic and confident day. Thanks so much for watching. You can get weekly lessons like this in your inbox along with access to worksheets and checklists and transcripts from all the podcast episodes. When you sign up below, you can also subscribe on YouTube and YouTube will notify you when there's a new video. And you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. If you do, be sure to say hello or leave a comment below the video to let me know you're there. Thank you so much for watching and have a very enthusiastic day.